Hi, Neil, Lewis. good to see you again. Yeah. Um, after the Blackburn game, you spoke to Oggy, you felt disappointment at the nature of the timings of the goals. How do you reflect on the Easter weekend a few days on? Yeah, just the timing, that's all. I mean, um, you know, what, what disappointed me is the timing of the goals, you know, one minute into the second half when we've been speaking about things and uh, a couple of lads made mistakes and then we know that we're in for 45 minutes of hell, really. Uh, but we defended ever so well. Um, I thought we, um, you know, we put our heads on the on the block at times and uh, on another day, and once, once again, another elementary mistake, really, it cost us the second goal. I know you only look at it from your own point of view, really. Um, I do think that we probably left a little bit on the pitch at Watford. Uh, they put so much in on the Friday as well. We were a little bit, I thought we were a yard short early doors. But, uh, you know, if you'd have said we'd have got a point before the game, I'd have been happy. I was just disappointed after that. So. Yeah. I think you said, you know, the, the five games that you've just played from conversations, we had a lot of coupon busters in there, weren't you? But oh. 11 points from those five, you must be absolutely delighted. Yeah, I never in my wildest dreams thought we could get the results that we got in, in those games. The lads worked hard. They really listened to me and, and, and taken everything that I wanted on board. We aren't good enough to play free-flowing football. We've got to be organised. And yes, I, you know, I read some of the forums, why don't I play two or three forwards? But if I did that, you know, we're going to get another Coventry or a Burnley job. So we have to, we have to do it sensibly, really. Uh, and we're coming up now against two teams that have possession base, really, both both Swansea and Sunderland. So, you know, we'll, we'll not have a lot of the ball in either game. So we have, we have to be really organised. I'm, I'm interested to know, Huddersfield Town now, league position-wise, you are out of that bottom three. Has, has the messaging changed at all from you and Ronnie, given the league positions now different? No, not at all, really. We, we, you know, we know that we've got to get more points uh, in these last five games. And it's... You know, we just got to hope that we can get dig more out than than, than our opponents. You know, um, but there's no such thing as an easy game, and I'm sure there'll be a few surprises between now and in the season. Like I think we've, I think we might have surprised everybody in the whole three games. Really, I, I'm not sure anybody got us down for one win in those three games. I guess with the Neil Warnock side, I probably already know the answer to the question, but is there any risk of complacency in the side going forward, given the last five results? I don't think we've got that kind of player really at the club. I, I mean, uh, you know, it's it's. Um, I was going to say an experienced squad, but it's got it's you know it's got the the the, the old campaigners are doing well. You know, your Tom Lees, um, Helly, Kaka, class in that area, Matty, um, you know, and Hoggy. They're they're all good pros, uh, and the young lads have really come on board really, and uh, you know, one or two of them are really flying. Um, so I, I've just got to be a little bit careful. <laughs> Um, we've got a hell of a long trip to 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 Swansea, so you know we've we've got to we've got to prepare as best we can. You never know with the motorways. They, you know I know what the M5s like from my time at Cardiff. Um, so I'll, I'll be glad when we're down in the hotel at Swansea and um, and and you know relaxing because it'll be a tough game Saturday. You know they they've done well lately as well, but it'll be tough for them as well. Yeah. And then following Swansea, the trip up to Sunderland and then Cardiff in a couple of weeks, that travel time, how does it affect your preparation? Um, I honestly don't know. I mean, the Watford, I thought we, we put a lot into that game. I didn't think many people give us a chance at Watford. So, And, we, you know, we've been a goal down a few times as well. The lads have, have showed a lot of resilience and uh, character. Um, so it's... it's um, you know, you can't do anything about it. Looking forward, of five games to go, and I know you've spoken to us before about you like to advise the club, you're happy to advise. Um, whether the club are in the Championship or League One next season, do you have an idea in mind on what kind of character the club will need in the dugout next season if it can't be you, Neil? Not really, no. I, I just, I think um, what I've said is if I can help at all, I will do, um, which is natural. But the, only, the biggest help I could do is, is staying up. That'll ease a lot of problems, you know, jobs and everything else that's at stake when you have a relegation like that. So that's the first and foremost, really. I haven't got really time, you know, to 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 do too much other than that. Would you not fancy staying on at all? Yeah, yes, I would if I was sort of 20 years younger. Um, but no, I only work February, March and yeah. April. So I won't be doing anything till the end of next February. Fair enough. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't write off me coming back somewhere, you know, to help somebody. It's it's a very difficult 
you know, you, you work all your life and you want to see one or two things. And my wife's been great with me. And uh, I must say, by the way, her cooking is very good. And I did say <laughs> when I come up here, it'd be nice to get some good food. Yeah. And I got lambasted for saying it. <laughs> so my wife is a good cook, just to, make, just to clarify things. All right. Set the record straight. Yeah, there thank you. Are. Um, some positive news for the club, the transfer embargo, they're now out of that stage. Obviously, that might not help in the immediate future, but it, it does feel like some doom and gloom this season that the club are turning a corner. Yeah, I think I think it's important. I think Dave Baldwin, you know, he, he, I think I've helped him in the fact that he's been able to concentrate on, on selling the club. And uh, I think he's done a great job in, in, in what he's done there. Um and we've kept in touch. And I think it's a relief for him that he hasn't got to get involved in the football side. So, you know, I, I will be talking to him all the time and, and helping as best I can, really. Um, but, you know, we have got what we've got in players and I've got to just dig some results out with what we've got for the rest of the season. And, uh, you know, like I said, there, I've really enjoyed the challenge. It is the toughest one in my, in my career, really. But it's a lot tougher than when I was at Rotherham, believe it or not. And that was tough, you know. Um, but, you know, we, we, we've clawed some results out. Now we've got to do the hard work by finishing it off. Uh, you know, the sooner we get there, the better for me. We were just chatting to David Kasumu before you. He's played under three managers already during his time at Huddersfield Town. Started the last couple. What have you made to David's impact on the team? Uh, I think he's doing well, David. He's, you know, um, David, you know, he's just got to... You know, we, we're working on, you know, the, the, when he does something really good, he gets a little bit excited and, and, and misplaces his pass. He's just got to concentrate when he does something good to make sure it gets to his shirt, uh, which is not, you know, not difficult. He can do that, I'm sure. But his, his tenacity and that has helped. And, um, you know, I'm sure he'll play a big part in the last five games. Jack Radoni with a couple of goals as well. We know before you came in, this side at times this season really struggled for goals. Seeing Jack get a couple of goals, do you feel that could spur the other players on to maybe get on the score sheet themselves? Well, I, I mean, I said to Jack before he got his first goal at Watford, I think it was that midweek, I expected him to score five or six goals before the end of the season, really. And I don't see why he, why he doesn't. He gets in some great positions. He's got loads of energy, smashing lad, you know. So um, it'll be interesting. I, th I think he, I think there's goals in him, but you know, if you told me before that Matty uh, Pearson would score, yeah. whatever he is, I heard somebody say he's our top goal scorer. I think Jordan Rose might dispute that, um, but um, he, you know, he's done well. Yeah. He's done well. They all have. I think you know we we work really hard at set pieces, and I think I saw yesterday. I think we're the third best in the league. So um, you know, you can't ask any more than that. Kean Harrett's another one. Tricky loan spell at Bradford City and a tricky time off the field at times this season. It must have been pleasing to see him get his name on that score sheet at Watford. Yes, and he's a lovely, he's a good lad. I like him. He's my kind of lad. Um, people at Port Vale told me he did well there as well. So, you know, wherever he's been, he's left a good impression. Um, going to be a big season for him next season. Um, you know, he's he got to try and establish himself as a regular member of the squad. And, um, you know, I would imagine with a number of players coming in, it'll be a difficult job, really, for some of the lads. But there's no reason why he doesn't. Uh, he's got everything going for him. Going forward to Swansea, are you able to welcome any players back? Do you have any injury concerns for the trip down to Wales? Uh, we've got one lad, which I, I won't go in detail, he, who's got an illness at the moment, but we'll have to wait and see tomorrow morning, really, on that. Other than that, no, I think it's a, it's a, it's a pretty much a... We've got one or two lads still training, increasing training, um, who should be back for the sort of the Cardiff game. Um, but nothing unt untoward, really. Down to Swansea as well. And for a former Cardiff City manager who enjoyed success up the road from Swansea, you'll probably not get the warmest of receptions, Neil. But I know you kind of like that kind of uh, situation, don't you? Yeah, I mean, to be fair, they've, they've, since the uh, last couple of years, they've, they've done the double over Cardiff, which is... When you when you are in Cardiff, believe you and me, it's not easy to take uh, when they come up the road and beat you. So it's uh, you know they'll be flying at the moment. They've had a good good run of results and what have you. But um, it's so I always like when the Swans. I think it's a you know a good atmosphere. They get get behind the team. You know it's just whether we can get the ball or not. <laughs> that's the, that's the problem. It, it's interesting because maybe nationally we look at 
Manchester United versus City, Everton against Liverpool, Spurs, Arsenal, those kind of derbies. Does it feel different down in South Wales because the focus is always on Cardiff against Swansea? No, no different whatsoever. I mean, I was a Sheffield, obviously a Sheffield United fan then with the, the, the derbies in Sheffield, but um, they're really, really uh, vociferous, the derbies in, in Wales, as you would expect, really. Uh, but two two good clubs, well-run clubs as well. Um, you know, I, I'm sorry to see my old club Cardiff struggling a little bit. I thought a couple of weeks ago they were going to fly away, you know, really. They, they've got some decent players. But, um, you know, it's it, you just got to worry about yourself, really. And we've got to try and put a performance in at Swansea and try and come away with something. And they are in good form, as you say, three wins in the last four. We're talking to David. Playoffs might be a little bit out of reach for them. Is it a different kind of challenge this Saturday, Neil, instead of coming up against one of those promotion contenders? Yeah, I mean, they're all, you know, Watford and Sip would, would class in a similar situation to Swansea. Um, and there's, you know, Sunderland, if they win on Saturday, they'll expect, you know, the, to, to try and get in the playoffs. They're all pushing for something, aren't they? So uh, they're all difficult, difficult games. I don't think you can say any, there's any any easy game in this league. You just have to um, play them on on, on merit and, and and hope that you can get you know get a get a result. Best luck, for it. thanks for your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to Stephen from the Examiner next, please. <clears throat> Where do you see Swansea? Posing a threat, where do you think you can maybe get at them? I just, I just think they're a solid side, aren't they? they you know, they um, they are the most possession side I've ever seen in the league since that. You know, really, they keep the ball really well, move it well. They've got um, good finishes up front if they get the opportunities. So we've really got to concentrate on ourselves, really, and try and make sure that we're prepared for and we can give them a good game. That's all. You know, we don't want to. Just get beat easily and come back up the motor and same again at Sunderland. We've got two two tough games. Um, but you know, we've got to make sure that we're not in the bottom three after the two games, which we quite easily could be. I think you've shown in the past few games sort of a willingness and an effort to try and outscore the opposition rather than necessarily just keeping it tight, trying to nick a one nil. Is that sort of an intentional Yeah, I like I like I do like scoring goals. If I'm honest, um, and I think that we've got we have got certain players that are quite capable of that as well, you know. And we do work extra hard on the set pieces because I do feel that's another area what we can, um, you know, what we can do against most teams really. So we, we you know, we, we we work on that side of the coin. But I mean, you know, you've got people like Jack and Josh and up to some extent, and one or two others are full of confidence at the minute. Um, and you do you do play different when you're full of confidence. You, you've got an extra yard, you an extra buzz about you, and it's it's like anything else, really. You, you, when you feel good about yourself, you you, you play better. Um, we saw, obviously, since you've come in, uh, you've played that very man-to-man system, and I think especially against Blackburn, is it sort of degrees of that system going man-to-man? Is it sometimes off? Well, we didn't we didn't go man-to-man everywhere. You know, I think I think Matt, Matty did a good job on. On Diaz, if I'm honest, I, I can't remember him doing too much. So, yeah, we will if we have to. We do, we do that. But um, just normal. It's just how I am, really. Some people probably won't dream of it, but that's what I get paid for. That's why different different managers have different styles, don't they? And you've done a lot of good work in attack without having a huge amount of the ball recently. Is that something you'd, you'd sort of try to impress on the players and get them? Do- Absolutely. If we'd have picked a pass out the other night, we could quite easily have won six. I've looked at five opportunities where we break in and a, just a half-decent pass would have put one of the lads in and we've lost it every time. You know, it's scandalous, really, because we're not going to have opportunities very often in that respect when we're playing against the likes of, of a Blackburn and Swansea and Sunderland. So we have to make them count, really, and it, that's what disappointed me, really. We could have had, you know, three or four one-on-ones just with one single pass. And uh, it was a sh- shame that we threw them all away. Three away games in a row now, but you've you've won the last two. Does that give you a bit of heart coming up, going on the road now? Absolutely, yeah. Who was the one before Millwall? Um, you beat Watford. Oh, Watford after you mean? That's right. Yeah. You forget it, my <laughs> I've got an excuse for that. 
Um, I just think, I don't think it really matters where you are home and away at the minute. I think at this time of the season, there's pressure everywhere. And I, I don't see a way, sometimes I think it might, you know, it's not, you know, some of the, I mean, for example, the next two have to beat us, don't they? To, to have any chance of, of getting where they want to be. So there's as much pressure on that as what I would say, us trying to claw away from the bottom end. You know, it's different types of pressure, really. That's all for me. That's look. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve.